So hi everyone, welcome to today's Young Women in Bio event. Um, today's event is going to be focused on college and learning about exploring STEM and undergrad. We're really excited to have all of you here. We have five great panelists or six great panelists for you guys today. Um, and we are going to explore different colleges, different majors, and we're gonna be focusing on universities here in North Carolina. Um, so today's event, is hosted by Young Women in Bio. We are a volunteer organization um, that plans monthly events to learn about different areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. We host events every month. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Um, you can, um, we would hope that you guys may attend some of our other events in the future. Um, and each month we focus on something different. And Young Women in Bio is part of a larger national organization called Women in Bio. Um, and Women in Bio has chapters all across the United States. So we do have some girls that may be joining us from outside of the Raleigh, Durham area. So we welcome you to our events. And this is something great with having virtual events as we can um, bring information, fun activities to more of you. So today's event, as I mentioned, is a college panel. Um, we have many great panelists from different universities here in North Carolina. Um, so I just wanted to go over some background information for today's panel. Um, feel free to have your camera turned on or off. We are recording this event. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, use the chat box to ask questions whenever you have a thought comes to your head today. Um, we really want you to ask as many questions as you want. Um, you can send your questions directly to everyone. That would be easiest or you can share directly with the Women in Bio account that I'm using. Um, so me and Doreen, who's another Young Women in Bio volunteer, will be leading the moderation of the panel. Um, so we'll be sharing your questions with the panelists and allowing them to answer. Um, and if you're really brave, you can ask your question over video. Um, and if you wanna do that, just use the raise hand feature and we will call on you. Um, and as I mentioned, we have many different panelists today and they have many different backgrounds and they come from many different universities. So we want you to just be open to new possibilities. Maybe some of these schools you've never considered, um, that's totally okay. I know where I went to undergrad, I didn't wanna go there at all until I talked to somebody who went to that school. Um, some of the panelists may have a major you never considered. Um, they all have very diverse majors and they each have something unique about them. And some of our panelists have already graduated, so they're also gonna to touch on their careers. Um, so maybe some of the panelists might have a career that you've never considered. Um, so we really just want you guys to be open today, um, listen, ask as many questions as you want. Um, so what we're gonna start off with today is each panelist is going to give a brief introduction about their time in undergrad. Um, as you guys have questions, you can put them into the chat box. And after we go through all of the introductions, we'll open up the panel to questions. Um, we have some questions we already predetermined that we're going to ask, but we will mix in your guys' questions throughout the event. So without further ado, we'll start with our first panelist, and that is Nikki McArthur from North Carolina State University. So Nikki, if you wanna go ahead. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Hey, everyone. Happy to be here. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. Um, like Caitlin said, my name's Nikki, and I went to NC State for my undergrad degree. Um, since you guys might not be able to go to campus that easily right now, um, I just included a few pictures um, on the top left and bottom left uh, of the screen. Uh, the top one is the student union, uh, where you can like go grab food, hang out with friends. Um, and there's a lot of other great events happening there. Uh, so undergrads spend a lot of their time there. And then the bottom picture um, is the Brickyard, uh, a lot of classrooms and buildings surround that area um, and the library as well. So those are just two areas that I spent a lot of my time at, um, at NC State. Um, but I studied chemical and biomolecular engineering. So NC State has a really great engineering program along with other really great programs. Um, so I was really happy to be involved in engineering um, and NC State's good opportunities there. Um, one of the main things that I spent a lot of time doing at NC State was undergrad research. 
So uh, graduate students at universities um, at NC State and all across the country do research, but oftentimes they need help in the lab um, with small projects or um, there's opportunities for undergrads to work in the lab and start their own projects. So after my first year in undergrad, I realized that might be something I wanted to do. Uh, so I contacted some labs and some um, professors working in the chemical engineering department and um, asked if they had opportunities for undergrads to work in their lab. And a couple of them got back to me. And so I started working in a, a lab in the biomolecular engineering field um, the summer after my first year. And a picture of that lab is in the top right corner. So I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> and um, it was a super awesome experience. I really, really loved working in the lab. Um, it got me great exposure to a lot of different research techniques. And um, I learned a lot of things and met a lot of great people. Um, and I realized that that's something that I might want to do after undergrad. I might want to do research, um, go to grad school, and that opportunity um, was really a really good experience. Um, so I also did a couple of other things in undergrad. I had an internship in a pharmaceutical company, so I got to see a different side of research, um, more in the industry side. And um, the summer, my last summer in undergrad, I studied abroad in Santiago, Chile. So um, I actually did an internship program abroad and I worked in a research lab, a, a cancer biology research lab. So um, I spent my weeks doing that and then my weekends traveling. So on the right is a picture of me um, in the south of Chile uh, on one of my long hikes. And um, that was really cool to see what research is like in a different country. And it, it's really not that much different than research um, at NC State. And uh, finally, um, my main extracurricular activity was joining the rock climbing club. Um, there's a picture of a couple of us at one of our climbing events um, on the bottom. And uh, that was a good experience just to meet a bunch of new people, um, get some, uh, ac some athletic activity in. And uh, a lot of my friends from the climbing club were my best friends for undergrad. And I still am in touch with a lot of them now. Uh, so that was all organized through NC State too. So they have a lot of great clubs and resources available. You can do whatever you want. Um, so after undergrad, I, uh, I really enjoyed doing research throughout my time in undergrad. And um, so I decided that I wanted to go to grad school, but I didn't want to go to grad school right after undergrad. I think I wanted to take a year um, to kind of figure out exactly what schools I wanted to apply to um, and where I wanted to go. So I asked, um, the head of the research lab that I worked at as an undergrad if I could stay on for an extra year. And uh, he said that was fine. And so I stayed on for a year and I kind of acted as like a, a pre-grad student working on my own project. And um, that was really fun. And it kind of showed me what it might be like to be a grad student. And I, I liked it a lot. So I figured that grad school was right for me. Um, so I applied to a bunch of grad schools. And now I'm a second year graduate student at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Um, and I'm studying bioengineering. So right now I work in a lab and um, we're developing tools. Um, I'm working on developing tools to study Alzheimer's disease, but other people work on vaccines um, and stem cells. So a lot of cool research going on there. That's it for me. Cool. Thank you, Nikki. Um, next, we will go to Hunter from uh, East Carolina University. Hi guys, um, like she said, my name is Hunter. Um, I attended East Carolina University for my undergrad and I'm also getting my um, master's there currently um, online. Um, for a lot of you guys in STEM, uh, when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to go either into pharmaceuticals or um, forensic science. That, that is what I wanted to do. Um, and ECU was never on my list. Um, I did not want to go to the school. I never considered it. I had tons of cousins um, who had gone to state, uh, Charlotte and Wilmington and I knew so much about those schools, um, but when I went and toured with my mom, I actually ended up falling in love with the community in Greenville, um, and just the campus was beautiful. It's very small and close-knit, and um, we got to go and tour the Allied Health Campus, um, which is fairly new. It's connected to Vidant, which is the main hospital and medical area um, down there. Um, got to kind of tour some of their facilities, and uh, it just it was, it was a perfect fit for me, so I was very excited to go there. 
um, when I was looking at different degrees, um, they had everything I wanted. Um, I, I didn't have exactly one picked out. I was interested in several things. Um, so when you're looking at colleges, I think it's very important to kind of look if you decide when you're in, you want to change directions, that maybe that school already has something for you. And um, that, that definitely was the case for me. Um, so I studied health service management. I went in, I was a biology major. I went to clinical laboratory science. Um, and then I found the health service management um, community um, while I was in my clinical laboratory classes, um, just working in businesses for small businesses throughout college. I kind of found out I had a knack for business, but I still enjoyed the science side of things. Um, so this was a good um, in-between uh, major for me to start out in. Um, and doing that major, I was able to um, enter the clinical research field. Um, and so I worked on, I work in um, business development operations primarily. Um, I've worked at PPD, um, a CRO, and I'm currently at Albany Molecular Research Institute. Um, we are a clinical drug manufacturing industry. So there is always room um, for anyone who has a science interest as well as business, you can put them together and it has been the perfect combination for me. Um, but I threw in a few pictures. Um, I had a little bit of a different college experience. I graduated in three years. I really liked to work. I wanted to get in, so I wanted to get out. Um, so my first year, I threw in a picture of the dorms. They actually don't look like this anymore. ECU has completely remodeled all their dorms, and we have now have this beautiful student um, union that you can see in the bottom. That was not there when I was there, so they've had quite a few upgrades, um, but it was fun living on campus and having that um, that time. And then for my second year, um, I went straight into the program. Um, dual enrollment in high school was a huge help for me to kind of get ahead in some classes. So when I was in high school, I, uh, we partnered with the local community colleges. Um, so I was able to knock out a lot of those first year classes before I got to um, campus. Um, and my second year, I lived off campus um, in my program. I'm jumping around, I apologize. <laughs> um, but they were uh, really small class sizes. Um, even uh, like the main first year classes were really small, but especially my major, I was never in a class of more than 30 people. Um, so two of the girls in the top right, one is actually um, at my house this weekend and I have made the best friends um, in that program because we were able to um, just work so closely together. Um, and I just really enjoyed those relationships that I made um, at college. And then um, the fountain is one of the like main pictures that you see when you tour campus. So that's just in the heart of our campus. It's a beautiful little spot there to hang out in. Um, and then the third picture is our cupola. Um, if you go and tour East Carolina and they probably don't have the official tours, um, the, the saying is if you walk under the cupola before you um, graduate that you won't graduate four years. And um, I toured by myself without a guide and I walked under it the very first day, but I graduated in three years. So it did get me, but I didn't technically graduate in four. So um, just a note, if you do go show up on campus, but any questions about ECU, I'm happy to answer. Great, thank you so much, Hunter. Um, next, oops, don't go back. Next, we have Lily who graduated from Duke University. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lily Park. I'm an associate of the Act Casualty Actuarial Society. Um, and I graduated with a math degree from Duke University um, with a, a minor in finance. And um, during college, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, study abroad in Paris and Oxford. And um, in Paris, I studied neuroscience, er, neuroscience and in Oxford I studied philosophy so you might wonder how did I fit that in with my math major um, well the answer to that is um, actuarial science is really a science of decision making and to um, fully understand um, decision making science I wanted to look at it from um, the perspective of um, human behavior and the human brain as well as philosophy um, in addition to the more um, analytical approach that I was trained in through my mathematics studies. So um, 
I, I had a fantastic time with my study abroad and I also um, did an internship at a insurance company um, as well as uh, math uh, research at Texas A&M University during my college years. Um, so I got exposure to a variety of uh, math related careers before deciding that I wanted to commit to the actuarial career path. I was able to pass two exams before graduating and I spent about five years after college um, working at a large uh, commercial PNC company. And as of about two months ago, I am now at a uh, large personal uh, insurance company. And in my current role, I um, help price property insurance products in Florida um, using my uh, uh, background and knowledge. So really excited to uh, talk to you guys today. Uh, and yeah, thanks. Thank you, Lily. Um, next, we have Samya. Um, she graduated from the University of North Carolina. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Samya. Um, so I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. And like Caitlin said, I graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, so growing up, my parents were both in STEM. Um, and so I knew I kind of wanted to do something in STEM, but I didn't know exactly what. So when picking a college, I wanted to be really open with my options. Um, I went in as like a typical pre-med that a lot of people <laughs> that I know did. Um, but I kind of in the back of my head knew that I eventually would choose something different. So I wanted to pick a school that had a lot of diversity and career options, which led me to UNC. Um, so I graduated from UNC in 2018 with a double major in chemistry and econ um, and a minor in medical anthropology. So as you can see, none of those things are really related. Um, so I was really like kind of different in terms of my majors. Um, I really liked math growing up. So econ was something that really fascinated me as well as chemistry because of the math behind it. Um, and then halfway through about undergrad, I decided I wanted to pursue dentistry but I was involved in so much in undergrad that I was kind of burnt out. Um, so I wanted to take a gap year. So I did an AmeriCorps program um, called City Year. So I moved to Washington DC for a year and I taught in middle schools. Um, I taught like low income underserved uh, communities. So that was a really, really interesting experience. And I'm like super, super happy I took a gap year. Um, so I know that's like ways down the road for you guys. But um, if you have any questions about that, like feel free to hit me up. Um, and then I started dental school, um, I guess a year and a half ago. So I'm a second year in dental school um, and I loved UNC so much that I'm back. Um, so I'm a D2 now and we have about two and a half years left. But those are just a couple of my pictures um, on the bottom right. So I did do research in undergrad in the dental school for about two, two and a half years. Um, and that's Miranda. Um, she was one of my research mentors. I don't think she's on the call today, but she contacted me about being here today. Um, and research was a huge part of what I did. Um, I learned so much about kind of like the behind the scenes of what goes into like a lot of the classroom learning that we do. Um, and it just teaches you so many different things than what you learn in the classroom. Um, so I loved my research experience. Um, and then I also TA'd. So I taught a chemistry lab as well as like TAing for organic chemistry. Um, so that was something really special. And then I was also involved in not just science things. Um, I really liked being involved in things that weren't science related because it gave me a break kind of from like the overwhelming amount of work. Um, so I was involved in our activities board um, and we I was a vice president of finance. So we brought a lot of speakers. So that's Hassan Minaj. And then we brought like a bunch of different speakers. So that was like a super cool opportunity to like network, meet people and just like dip my feet into something different. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So our next speaker is Day Avon from North Carolina Central University. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, Diavion. Diavion. I go to North Carolina Central University. I'm a senior, so I'll be graduating uh, next semester. Um, so my major is pharmaceutical sciences, and um, I kind of went into that freshman year. Um, I thought I'd be interested in pharmaceuticals um, in middle school and coming up through high school, I knew I really liked science and I was um, really interested in anatomy and um, how drugs work in the body. And so when I heard of pharmaceuticals, I 
thought that had something to do with it. But um, going into it, I realized it's more um, industry based and more manufacturing. Um, I don't regret going into that major, but it's just a, um, a note to research what you're going into. But I am uh, um, thankful that I went into that and the opportunities I've gotten from it. Um, I do uh, want to go to medical school. Um, I'm not sure what kind of doctor I want to be yet. I'm thinking cardiology, but I would like to open a clinic and then serve um, low socioeconomic communities. Um, so um, some activities I, were in, I was involved in outside of um, my classes was ISPE. And so ISPE is really a, um, it's a great networking opportunity for um, people that are interested in pharmaceuticals. Um, I was president for that for um, about two years. And so through that, I we went to a conference and we got to go to Philadelphia one year. And the next year, the conference was actually in Las Vegas. And for both of those trips, it was um, paid for the flight, the hotel, they gave you a stipend for food um, to get back and to and from the airport, things like that. And um, actually when I went to Philadelphia, that was my first time on a plane. So that was really an interesting experience for me. Um, Las Vegas was interesting. Um, actually, the picture on the bottom right, that was in Las Vegas, and that we actually got to stay at Caesars Palace, which is a really nice hotel in Las Vegas. And then um, there's another organization I was in called Queen and You. Um, I was in that, I've been in that since freshman year, and then last year I was the treasurer for that organization. And then that picture is the top middle where um, we had a like a photo shoot for the executive board. Um, I feel like that organizations like that are a great way to meet um, other girls on campus. So you guys can um, build bonds and support each other because it's important to have a um, support system while you're in college. Even outside you have your family, but it's good to have people who are um, on the campus with you that you can reach out to. And then um, I volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club a lot. Um, also, outside of science, I also have a passion for um, working with kids and mentoring. And so the Boys and Girls Club allowed me to do that. So um, in Durham, the where North Carolina Central is, is also a, um, a low income community. So um, when the kids come in, we were able to help them with their homework. Um, they were able to play games, um, things like that. So I really looked forward going to there, going there every day. Um, same was a STEM organization for um, minorities in science. So again, that's another organization to um, reach out to people who are maybe taking the same classes as you. And then again, conferences. So I said the bottom, one on the bottom right was um, in Las Vegas with ISP. The one on the left that is in Anaheim, California. And so I was able to go there through my internship and it's called Partners. And so it's a partnership between UNC Chapel Hill and North Carolina Central. And you can do cancer biology research, which is what I did um, not this past summer because it got canceled, but the summer before that. And they also have a public health side. And so I actually um, met one of my closest friends through that. So um, through all these opportunities, you're able to meet people. And also when I went to Anaheim, everything was paid for. And then also I'm in the honors program here at Central. And so um, with my major pharmaceutical sciences, I got a full scholarship from that. And then I also got a scholarship through the honors program. Um, the picture in the top left, that was um, at the beginning of the semester because I'm in a lab right now. And so we had to do a um, scavenger hunt and we had to take pictures. And so they wanted to make sure that we knew we had to wear our goggles and our masks and our lab coats when we got into lab. So we had to take a picture to prove that. And then on the other side, on the top right, that was at Chapel Hill when I was doing the um, cancer biology research and um, putting my cells back in the incubator. And then in the bottom middle, uh, I don't know if you can really tell, but that's Kiki Palmer. And so she visited our campus. So um, before COVID and all that, we would have different um, um, celebrities come to just to talk to us. So we have, we've had Kiki Palmer, um, Common, Angela Rye, April Ryan. So um, yeah. So if you have any questions about um, pharmaceutical sciences or um, transitioning 
between what you want to do because what you come in as a freshman wanting to do you don't not totally committed to going into that when you graduated you have um room to shift your interests and it's better to um go ahead and decide than when you graduate and you're like oh i'm not passionate about this so, yeah great great thank you so much and then we have one more representative from nc central um, because their program is so unique and they were very helpful to us. Um, Kennedy is our next speaker. She made multiple slides, so she has lots of cool pictures. So um, just tell me when you want me to forward. Um, so. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I got a little excited. <laughs> so I'm Kennedy and well, you can go to the next slide. Sorry. That's just a picture of myself. So I'm also a pharmaceutical science student at North Carolina Central University, and I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Oh, you can next slide, please. So I've done research in, I've done genetic research. And then, so that picture on the right is me at Duke University the summer after my freshman year here. And um, I'm just with my poster. And then this, that same research I took to Anaheim, California, also like the Avion. And um, that conference is Abercams, and that's me outside of the convention center. And one cool thing about this convention center is that it's right across the street from Disneyland. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So um, I like to plug the organizations that I'm a part of because I think they're really important to your experience in undergrad. So the, my, by far my favorite organization that I'm a part of is Honda Campus All-Star Challenge. And that is a trivia based club that where we compete against other HBCUs. So you would think, oh, are you a part of like another class? Because all, I, all we do is like learn history, geography, but it's actually really fun because being competitive and um, working as a team that has made me break out of my comfort zone a lot. And um, those two pictures on the right is when we traveled to compete um, against Morgan State. So we went to Baltimore and um, Washington, DC. Oh, you can go to the next slide, please. And I just wanted to put this picture of my team because they made a big impact on my um, social health while in undergrad. And I just love them. <laughs> you can go to the next slide. And these are just some final pictures of um, things that I do for fun. So that bottom left picture is me hiking. And um, the center picture is me at a football game with the same uh, Honda Campus All-Star Challenge team. The top picture is me just in Durham next to the bull. And then the top right picture is me in our Greek bull um, at North Carolina Central. And then I added the picture, the last picture is me um, and my twin sister at during homecoming at NCCU as well. Great, thank you. We actually have two sets of twins then on the panel because Lily's also a twin. <laughs> yes, awesome. I got excited. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah Lily, both Lily and her sister went to Duke and they're both math majors. I don't know if you and your sister are <laughs> the same major as well, oh. but yeah. Okay, thank you everybody for sharing your intros. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so then we can see everybody's faces. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, we will take questions now. We'll go into the panel part of the discussion. Um, and if you guys have any questions throughout um, what we're talking, if you guys think of anything, you can put them in the chat. It's probably easier if you send the questions to everybody, but if you want to send them specifically just to me, Caitlin, you can send it to it's I'm named W I B R T P because um, that's our host account. Um, so let me open up my questions. So let's see. Let's start with um, a question about the transition to college because I know that can be kind of scary and it's new. It's different. How did you guys feel transitioning going from high school to college? Was it hard? Was it easy? Was there anything you would have done differently? Um, I don't know if anybody wants to start first or I can call on people. Um, 
Connor, do you want to go? Oh. You can take it. You can start if you want to. Yeah, you can um, start if you want. I, I, I can. Um, um, I was hoping somebody who could say it was easy to go first and they enjoyed it, but I would say for me, it was a very hard transition. I was from a small town. I was really excited to get out and have that college experience that I saw all of my um, peers going into. Um, I would say the first semester was fine, really enjoyed it. Um, and the sec second semester at the very beginning is when it got hard for me. Um, I had a few friends from college that were there. I had made a new friend group. Um, but you, you really find in college who you are and what your values are. And um, I quickly started to disalign with the people I was associated with. And I was about halfway through my first year when I realized like I needed a new friend group. I, I didn't really fit in with them. Um, and I really struggled my first year. So it, it was a very hard transition. And so my second year uh, when I was off campus and still trying to meet people, it was very hard. Um, but that's why I was thankful for the small class size as I mentioned earlier, because I was able to build stronger connections um, with people in my program. Um, and that helped me through it all. So that's me. Yeah. Um, I think Devon, you were going to speak. Do you want to speak or share? Um, for me, I was from a small town as well. Um, I applied to two colleges, which I don't really recommend. But <laughs> so I applied to a college that was closer to home, which is Fayetteville State University, and then I applied to North Carolina Central. Um, I didn't really want to go far from home, but um, I'm glad I ventured out. Um, for me, the I feel like my, the advisors in my degree program were very supportive. Um, I had had contact with them before I even got to Central, like with my scholarship interview. Um, I thought like they were supportive with bringing me in. And I had um, already, this probably helped, but I had already had um, exposure to college classes because I went to an early college. So um, when I got in, I sort of already knew what um, professors expected. Um, and then also like Hunter mentioned, um, having a friend group and having the right friends that are gonna support you and hold you accountable to things as well, which you're in college, you're responsible for yourself, but you also um, have friends that can help you um, be accountable because um, for the most part, you're all there for the same reason to graduate with your degree. Um, also other students within your degree program and within your classes, um, you guys can support each other as well. So I feel like my transition into college was um, it wasn't hard for me. It got hard for me during my uh, second and third year. <laughs> Great, thank you. Nikki, I know you live close, or you're from Raleigh and you went to NC State. Do you wish you would have went further away or was there still a transition being still being close to home or whatnot? Uh, um, I think that being close to home was good. It was convenient. So when I needed something for my parents, if there was ever an emergency, which I don't think there was, but there was always someone close by that um, I could I could reach out to if I needed. But uh, I mean, my parents were great. They didn't like smother me and stop by campus every weekend. So I could see them as much or as little as I wanted. Um, I did go to a high school in Raleigh. So I knew a handful of people coming from high school into NC State. So that was nice just to have a couple of people that I knew, especially during my first year that I could like catch up with. But those people for the most part didn't end up being the people that I spent the most time with um, in undergrad. So like the other panelists have said so far, like you definitely find a new group of friends because you know you realize your interests are different or just because there are so many new people in undergrad, it's you're going to a institution that's probably much bigger than your high school. So you have opportunity to meet um, a lot of different people. Um, one thing that I did in my first semester, which I don't advise, um, is I ended up taking a night class, which uh, it just is how my schedule worked out when I was signing up for classes. I was just trying to get the classes like as a first year, um, as a freshman undergrad student, you don't always get the best pick of classes. A lot of them are already taken. Um, so I ended up signing up for a night class and uh, it was not what I expected uh, because it was during the evening and so I couldn't go to clubs, uh, like club meetings a lot during my first year. And I think that's how a lot of people find their group and find their friends. So I joined the rock climbing club um, my second semester in undergrad and I 
already had reached out to them a little bit, so I knew that I could kind of join in halfway through the year. But yeah, I think getting involved with clubs is really important and really fun your first year. So try to do that if possible. It helps ease the transition into college. Um, did anybody else want to speak to that question or we can move on to something else? Um, I think somebody asked a question. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I, I just wanted to say something quick. Um, so I also took advanced classes in high school. So my academic transition to college wasn't that bad, but I definitely underestimated how socially different high school is from college. And that was a learning curve for me, like trying to make friends and seeing where I fit in. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the big uh, challenges of I think moving to college is balancing how much do I spend studying versus hanging out with friends. Um, both me and Lily went to the North Carolina School of Science and Math and I know when we were there they were like what did they say there was like you could either sleep study or be social there's like three things but you could only do two of those. <laughs> um, so I think college I think the first year is definitely like a transition um, and you have to find that balance and it does take some time. So I wouldn't get frustrated or anything um, if your first semester is a little bit of a struggle. Um, going off of that, since we were talking about making friends, I know I made a lot of friends my first year um, from my dorm. So I don't know if um, what at each school, if you're required to live on campus or at home, um, some universities I know require you to live on for multiple years, only one year. So I don't know if each of you wants to speak to the unique living situations at each of your universities. Um, Samia, do you wanna go first? Yeah, I can go first. Um, so I went to UNC Chapel Hill um, and I believe they only require one year on campus, um, but most people end up living two years. So UNC is, kind of a big separated campus. So like a lot of the first years live on South Campus, which is further away from classes. You have to like get up earlier, take the bus, walk and everything. Um, but by your second year, you kind of graduate to like the nicer dorms that are closer. Um, but by your third and fourth year, most people that I knew lived off campus. Um, it was cheaper than living on campus. You um, could like live in an apartment. You like had a lot more freedom and stuff. Um, so I personally lived on campus for two years and then I lived off campus um, my second two years. Uh, Lily, do you want to go? Because I know Duke has a little bit more. I think yes. you guys have to live on more. Sure, yeah. So I believe Duke requires you to stay on campus for one year and all the freshmen stay on East Campus. Um, and East Campus is a alcohol-free campus as opposed to West or Central. Um, so my first year, I was part of the wellness community, which was a community of students that were, you know, really committed to uh, uh, to um, caring for your own and everyone else's wellness, including, um, you know, staying away from alcohol and drugs. So I actually made a lot of really great friends in that community and ended up being part of that community for all four years of college. And I stayed on campus for all four years. And I really love that um, being close to classes and other like um, school facilities like the gym um, was really convenient and uh, I really enjoy that. And um, I guess I should also mention that, um, you know, I received full scholarship for all four years and that included room and board and the study abroad I mentioned earlier. So I know Duke is known to be uh, expensive, but if you are from a financially challenged family, I wouldn't let that stop you from applying. Um, they definitely um, make, make ways to work it for you. So. Great, thank you, Lily. Um, I'm just gonna go down my Nikki. I don't know what you guys have to do at state. Thanks. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that the first year students are required to be on campus. At least when I was there, that was the rule. Um, things might have changed in the meantime, but I'm not sure. Um, but I think similar to what a lot of other people said, um, usually when people stay on campus for two years or one or two years. Um, I stayed on campus for two years and was in one of the living communities. Um, I was in the honors community with the honors program. Um, so I met a lot of like-minded people who were really interested in 
research and STEM fields, um, as well as humanities, um, but people who um, wanted to focus on their studies. And uh, yeah, but I did realize uh, that campus housing is more expensive than I thought it was. Uh, sometimes you don't notice that because it's kind of bundled into your tuition um, when you pay for everything. But once I started looking for off-campus housing, I realized it was a little more inexpensive um, and you can live right on campus uh, or like right around campus or you can live further away if you have a car. Um, so there's definitely a lot of opportunities around NC State and the Raleigh area. Yeah. That's well, something I've noticed about NC State is a lot of um, students, I'm a grad student at NC State, so a lot of the students will live off junior and senior year because NC State makes it pretty easy to have a car to drive back and forth to campus. I know where I went to undergrad at Cornell, I think campus parking for each semester was $800 for a semester. So it's definitely something to consider if you want to live off campus is how will you get to and from campus. Um, Kennedy or... Hey, Yvonne, do you want to talk about NC Central? Um, so yeah, um, Central requires first year students to live on campus. And I feel like with Central, um, it's more common for people, um, for seniors to live on campus too. Um, my first three years, I stayed in um, a dorm called Annie Day. And so that was the dorm for the um, honors program. So I stayed there for three years. And then um, this year I moved into um, Eagle Landing. So that's more of a dorm for juniors and seniors. Um, it was just convenient for me. I'm also on full scholarship. It was just convenient for me to stay on campus. Um, I didn't want to have to hold myself responsible for having to get up and drive to campus every day. And then parking can be kind of hectic here. It's been different now since COVID, but um, I know before I would always hear people complaining about they had to walk from the parking deck or they had to wait for the shuttle. So um, yeah, it was just convenient for me to live on campus. Uh, Kennedy, I'm assuming you have a similar, did you live on campus or? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have a similar experience to Diavion. The only difference that I would, I'll plug is uh, Central is a lot smaller university than Duke, Chapel Hill, and NC State combined. So I think there's an advantage to going to a smaller university because you don't have to, like, I can walk this whole campus. I don't really have to take buses or shuttles or anything. And I think that um, because you can, because it's smaller, we have a closer knit community and more teachers are looking out for you. Not, I mean, not taking away from the bigger institutions. I'm just saying, if you have a smaller amount of people to attend to, then people tend to have more attention, I would say. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I totally understand that. I think that's something very fair um, and something that I think some people may be looking for. So I think that's great you pointed that out. Uh, Hunter, um, I think you said you lived on campus first year. Yeah, so ECU is first year you're required unless you happen to live within like 30 minutes. Um, you don't have to, but everyone lives on campus their first year and that's it. Um, it's very rare that a second, third or fourth year would live on campus. We have just a few dorms. Um, I lived in the all girls dorm green and I highly recommend that for anyone who goes to ECU. It was um, cleaner, nicer, and I, I really enjoyed that kind of community. They do, um, they didn't at the time, but now there is a new um, STEM living and learning community on the top of College Hill, and it is amazing. Like, they have um, huge study rooms and things like that, so I've heard that has been a, a nice advantage in the past few years. Yeah, I think that's good about pointing out living in an all-girls dorm first year, because I did that um, where I went to school, and it, it made a it was quieter, so it was easier to study there if you wanted, and it was it had a good sense of community. Um, so I think that's something people should consider. Um, fun to live with. They're dirty <laughs> and loud. <Yeah. laughs> um, so one of the other questions that was asked is, since it seems like you all were all involved in lots of clubs and activities, how did you balance your time with studies? Did your universities, I guess, have resources if you needed help? Um, I will add on, did you go to office hours? Maybe you want to explain what office hours are. Um, so I'll open that up. I don't know if somebody wants to speak or I can call them. I can speak. Okay, go Lily. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, extracurriculars. Okay. So on that point, um, you know, 
I know first year of college, I got really excited because there were so many options and um, so many clubs that sounded interesting. Um, I think what's important is to not rush and overcommit yourself because academically your classes are going to be a lot more demanding and you 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 do want to balance um, your classes with your extracurricular. Um, so my advice uh, would be to to not rush into things too too quickly. I was involved with the um, actuarial um, students club actually at Chapel Hill, but they allowed me to participate as well. Um, and uh, outside of that, um, I think I tried, you know, a few years with like student government, a few years with um, like student ambassador type program. Um, and it really took a while to find a, a club that I, I fit in. Um, so don't be afraid to, to try out different things. And some of these clubs like required interviews and things. And for me, that was new, but I think it was a, a really good experience and helped me learn a lot and um, really you know think about like how prepared am I to, um, to contribute to the club instead of just signing up and being done with that, right? So yeah. yeah. Did you find it hard to balance time commitments for clubs with academics? Yes, I think my freshman year, I realized that I overcommitted and I had to um, to balance that better mm -hmm. um, later. But if you brought up office hours, and I am really glad you did because I use those a lot. Office hours are times that professors have set aside for you to come as questions, um, or get help um, outside of class hours. And I definitely use that um, and uh, it was very, very helpful. And with Duke, with some of the really large classes where you have, you know, like Econ 101 and stuff, um, for students that are really struggling, they also match you with a mentor, like someone who already took the course the previous year um, and, and did well so that you could even get one-on-one -on -one help um, if, if you're really struggling. But the first, first thing to try is the office hours where professors and sometimes um, teacher, teaching assistants are there to help you with some of the homeworks or any questions you have. Um, Corinne asked one question. That I'm just going to ask right now to follow up because it's specific to something you just said. Um, you mentioned clubs had interviews. Um, I'm assuming that's for like exec board positions or were they like auditions or? Uh... Um, so actually the ambassador uh, program that I was talking about, basically the role is that you give students tour of the university okay. and whatnot. But for that role, um, there was even a written exam before you do an interview. And they really wanted to make sure that you had the knowledge to give a detailed tour of the school. So they had like a list of like questions you could, like like a list of uh, problems that you should be able to answer about your university and whatnot. So yeah, um, for that ambassador program, and I think also for student government, I believe they did an interview. They want to really make sure that you're committing to this with, with a vision and with a commitment instead of just signing up, just to put it on your resume, for example. So, and I, I think that's a good practice. Um, it really makes you uh, think hard before committing to, to different roles. Great, thank you so much, Lily. Um, did anybody else wanna to speak to about um they're struggling or balancing uh, classes and clubs. Yeah, I feel like I really didn't get into um, a lot until my second and third year. Um, my freshman year, um, I was really into ISP. And I think it's good that um, Lily mentioned that it's important. It's quality over quantity. Like don't, don't join like eight clubs and not be able to commit. It's better to join two clubs and be really involved with that. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, my second and third year was when I really got involved. Um, I feel like now I'm still figuring out how to balance things. Um, you get better and you just have to adjust as um, things change. Um, as far as office hours, I don't know if this makes me a bad student, but I only went maybe to one office hours. Um, so everybody's different when it comes to like learning and things like that. So um, office hours were just something that I didn't really um, didn't feel I needed to take advantage of um, in the classes that I um, 
I mostly took, I took a lot of chemistry and biology classes in my major. And so a lot of that, um, it came easier to me. And then um, I didn't mention this earlier, but as a freshman, I had picked up a math minor. And so with those classes, I feel like I was too far gone. <laughs> Office hours wouldn't have helped me. So I just didn't <laughs> um, go. And so I ended up dropping that. But um, I know for me now, especially on my previous two years, it was important for me to just um, take it day to day instead of, um, it's important to be um, proactive and not procrastinate, of course, but don't worry so much about what you have do next week or next month. Just um, try to focus on day to day. Cause I know during, um, I believe it was my fresh, my junior year, like first semester, I had on Tuesdays, I had a class all day. Like I had cancer biology at 8 a.m. And then I got out of um, um, lab at like five. And then I would have a meeting for ISP at 5.30. So it's just important to take it day by day. And um, a planner also helps in writing things down, putting things in your calendar. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, Nikki, I know being an engineer and an engineering major, a lot of the homework and the projects are team-based. So I know when I was an undergrad doing engineering, we would all meet up at office hours um, to work on homework together. Um, I don't know if that also happened at NC State, but um, I know that's a good way to um, have support with academics. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to collaboration within yeah. engineering. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much what I was going to say um, in yeah. response to this question. I did think it was, I did like struggle at times balancing all of my extracurriculars and classes. Um, and it's just something that a lot of people go through. So, you know, don't get too upset if you're falling behind or struggling because especially in like these difficult engineering classes in your junior and senior year, um, everyone feels like that at some point. Um, but like Caitlin mentioned, I like the most important thing for me in my classes was having like a friend group that I could study with and work with. Um, so I didn't end up going to office hours too much. I know a lot of people did take advantage of that. Um, and it worked for some people and it, it um, you know, just wasn't what I decided to spend my time working on. Um, so I think people did go to office hours and get input from the professors about homework problems or just general questions about the class. Um, but I ended up with a group of maybe four or five other chemical engineering students that were in almost all of my classes. And we would go to one of the buildings that a lot of the chemical engineering classes are in and work um, sometimes late hours throughout the nights on our homework or studying. Um, but honestly, some of those nights were some of my favorite nights in undergrad because we were all working super hard um, on the same set of questions. And uh, you know, some of us were better at something, some of us were better at others. So it was a really good collaborative experience. And I think that um, that's totally necessary in the engineering fields. Like you can't get through some of these problems without support from other people. And that's how it is in real life too. So don't feel bad for taking advantage of that. Don't think you should know every single detail about every single problem and be able to solve them right away on your own. Um, okay, let's see. Samia, I know you're involved in a lot of clubs um, and uh, maybe you could touch on the transition maybe between or the compare undergrad to dental school because I think that's something really unique um, about your experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like Diavian was saying earlier, I think being organized is kind of the key to balancing everything um, in undergrad, like balancing like your schoolwork with research with clubs and everything you have a lot more free time in your schedule. So it's easier to do that. But with dental school, we're literally in class from eight to five every single day um, with a one hour lunch break. So it becomes a little bit more challenging because you're expected to be a student like first, but you're also expected to be involved in other things like in case you wanna specialize or just like recruitment efforts and everything. So having a schedule is really important. And just like, I use my calendar on my computer like religiously, like that has my schedule for every single day. And I have a planner and I write everything down. Um, but also I think something that 
is easier to forget is like having a really good support system. Um, so like having people that you can be like, hey, like I really can't make it to this today. Or like, I know I committed to this, but like I'm just really swamped with things. And like having that easy and like open communication as well as that support system to kind of like understand what you're going through. Cause like everyone is super busy. Um, so like, it's okay also to like take a step back sometimes and be like, I need time for myself. Um, I think that's something that I really had to learn um, going through like a bunch of stuff in undergrad and like even dental school, like I've committed to all this, but like, what if I can't make it? It's like, it's totally okay um, to kind of take a step back sometimes. Great, thank you. Let's move on to something fun. Mm, I think something we're, we're talking a lot about academics and struggling with time management balance, but also the point of college is to have lots of fun, do fun things on the weekend. I don't know if each of you would wanna share um, maybe what your typical weekend was like. Um, did students on your campus go off campus to do things on the weekend or did people mainly stay on campus? Um, Hunter, do you wanna go speak to that? Um, let's see, one of my favorite things to do, uh, I probably did it every day, especially when it was warm, was um, the Greenway in Greenville. I like to go running or just walking in general. Um, so they have a long um, Greenway kind of just path that you can go down the Tar River. Um, so I liked exploring that area. Um, I worked a lot in college. Um, so I, I just, I worked a lot on the weekends. Um, I had a boyfriend at another college, so I'd go see him. Um, my first year I was in a service sorority. So we had a couple of events that we got to do together. Um, we would take trips, um, going to like a carowinds and like things like that so doing things with some people on campus um going home with some of your friends from college bringing them to your hometown and um going to see theirs and seeing where different people kind of come from that was always interesting i remember two of the girls i was friends with kept telling me they were from this small town they were from a small town and it was gastonia north carolina and i was like I was like, no, come home with me. I'm from a small town. Let me, let me show you what a small town is. Um, so just things like that, um, exploring. That's all, that, all I did. Great, thank you, Hunter. Uh, Lily, do you wanna talk about what you guys did at Duke? Sure. So, uh, you know, Duke and I'm sure other universities do too have a lot of like speaker series and um, performances by like guest musicians. And I attended a lot of those. Um, these are world-class musicians that come and perform at the university. And usually for students, the tickets are at a much discounted rate or sometimes even free for faculty concerts. Um, so I attended a lot of musical performances as well as um, going to like, a cappella concerts and cultural festivals put on by my friends to see them perform. Um, there's also like comedy shows and um, like theater, drama, all of those that students um, put together. I enjoyed going to those a lot. There is a bus um, that goes to the Woodfield Mall. Um, and I remember taking that bus and going shopping um, with my sister. Um, and one thing I wish I took advantage of is that Duke also has uh, day trips or weekend trips that they organize um, to go to the mountains or to the beach to learn how to surf or something or to do uh, whitewater rafting. Um, and those short trips you can sign up for. Um, and I think they have longer trips for like spring breaks and whatnot if you wanna go on a trip with friends instead of going home, for example. So a lot of opportunities for fun there. Yeah, I think a lot of, um universities have that. I know NC State does. Um, Nikki, I know you did a lot of rock climbing in undergrad. Um, yeah. Can you talk about that? Cause that's yeah, so sure. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, I was in the climbing club. So we are com um, our competitive season was in the spring. Um, so we were technically the competitive rock climbing club, but the competitions that we went to were very uncompetitive. They were super fun and just really relaxed and um, it was just a time to climb with friends and meet new people. So we had a um, competition circuit with other universities around North Carolina. So I went to ECU, um, Western Carolina U University, Brevard University or college, which is um, in the mountains. Um, I went to Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, so other ones like in the mountain area. 
Um, and so those were usually a full weekend event. We would drive to the university um, on Friday night, stay either camp somewhere or stay in a friend's place um, or find some accommodations and um, then climb on Saturday. And then sometimes we would climb outdoors um, on Sunday and then come back Sunday evening or sometimes we would just head back on Sunday um, after the climbing event was over. So yeah, those are super fun. Um, a really great way to just kind of leave schoolwork behind and do something that I was passionate about. Um, so that, that occupied a lot of my time on the weekends um, in the spring. But like Lily mentioned, um, a lot of universities have different programs for like the arts. And um, one thing that I, I guess got involved in, it wasn't really um, a club or something to get involved in, but you can sign up for NC State um, uh, North Carolina Symphony tickets and they're super duper cheap through NC State. So I think symphony tickets are like high at like 50, like 60, $70 typically, but with through NC State's program, I could get them for like 11 bucks. So I went to a lot of classical music concerts as well as just other concerts. So um, when you're at NC State, you can do anything in the Raleigh area and there's a lot of fun things to do. So lots of good things um, on the weekend and evenings to escape the academics a little bit. Great, thank you, Nikki. Um, Kennedy, do you wanna speak about fun things you guys do at NC Central? Oh, sure. Um, so if this were a normal fall semester, yeah. <laughs> I would probably be getting ready to go to a football game right now because mm -hmm. that's uh, one of my favorite activities to do on the weekend just because Central does host a lot of events on campus for students just because of historically the location of HBCUs. So um, we have like we have a bunch of performers come to our campus. Um, as the Avion was saying, we have speakers come all the time. So I think it's really fun to de-stress from class and go to those and just have fun sometimes during the week. Like another really big event that we have at NCCU is called 1040 Break. And at 1040 um, every Tuesday and Thursday, it's just like a big party in the Greek Bowl. And it's it's a break for everybody on campus, even professors. There's not there's not class during that time. So it's a it's a way for us to connect as a university. Yeah, that sounds really cool. We always need breaks. Uh, Day Avion, do you want to add anything to that? Oh uh, yeah, the 1040 breaks were really fun. Um, sometimes they would have, um, I think they were having like fundraisers out there where they um, raise money to like pie somebody in the face. Um, there were Greeks out there. Um, I feel like I took advantage of it when it was going on because I miss it now. Um, there's a uh, South Point Mall is close by. Um, Durham is also known for a lot of restaurants um, downtown and then also Central does give students um, free bus passes at the beginning of the year so you're um, you can use that to go all over Durham um, and then also around this time would be our homecoming so that's always a lot of fun and then during the spring semester they have spring fling and so they have performers come um, and then they usually have activities during the whole week um, I know, I don't know when it is exactly, but they're having like a fright night in the student union coming up. So I don't know what all that entails. So, yeah. Yeah, sounds like you guys have lots of fun at Central. Um, Samia, was there anything, any traditions or anything unique about UNC? Um, a lot of the same things that everyone else covered, but like basketball is huge. So mm -hmm. in like the end of winter, beginning of spring, every basketball game I'm there. Um, football, not so much, but we're becoming a football school. Um, and then just like everyone has mentioned like speaker series, um, like concerts, like things thrown on by student activities and stuff like that. And then also just the location's really nice because you can like go to Durham or you can go to Raleigh. Like I would go to the state fair every year. So that's just like nice to have. Great, thank you. Um, some other questions, we seem to be getting some questions about um, how did people look for scholarships? How did you guys go about um, funding options? Um, I don't know if anybody wants to touch on that. I don't know if you guys applied for specific scholarships. Do you wanna talk about the work that goes into that? Um, I don't wanna call anybody out on this question, <laughs> um, but there were some questions about that. 
Uh, I know when I was looking for scholarships, um, I feel like I just Google searched <laughs> like NCC scholarships and then it took me to the page where they have their list of scholarships. Um, I know um, at first uh, you can apply, you can do like one essay and it'll put you in for 10 scholarship applications. Mm -hmm. So um, you can do it that way. Um, and there's also outside funding like uh, Thurgood Marshall College Fund, um, different things like that. I know with my scholarship, um, I believe when I was looking for my looking through my major, um, it's called the Bright Scholarship, and so um, that was a full scholarship. I actually had the interview for my scholarship the same day as my prom, so I had to come up here for an interview and then go back home and finish getting ready for prom. Um, honors programs usually have scholarships at schools. Um, I know a lot of it is based on GPA and then like SAT or ACT scores, and then um, once you get here you have to have a um, keep a certain GPA like um, for the honors program I think it's like a 3.3 a and then for some scholarship programs you have to have a certain number of credit hours so um, and then with most of them I feel like they understand that life does happen and things happen so um, if you slip one semester they'll probably put you on a probationary period to help you um, like um, get your footing back so you can um, keep your scholarship. Great. Thank you. Um, I know there's a lot of random scholarships if you just Google or sometimes specific like organizations even your parents are belong to, you can apply for scholarships. I know when I was in college, my dad's insurance company offered a scholarship. So there's lots of random ways you can get money. <laughs> um, yeah, you just have to, and like an insurance company yeah. might be offered scholarships. A lot of it, you have to put in the time to look for it. Um, I know some of the schools offer specific like NC State has the Park Scholarship, I think that's what it's called. There's like specific school scholarships as well. And then there's also need-based financial aid. Um, also, um, sorry, um, I don't know. Um, like your guidance counselor as well, mm -hmm. or if there's anybody who's like a college liaison at your school, they would probably have some knowledge about things like that in handouts. Yeah, definitely. Those are all great ideas. Oh, I wanted to say okay. one thing that- Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You're first. <laughs> um, well, I'm an alumni scholar. So if you know anybody that went to the school that you're thinking about, ask them to write you a recommendation letter um, on behalf of the Alumni Association. I think that that is sometimes overlooked, but that's a really good way to get scholarships because a lot of people don't really think about alumni and then how they could help them now. Um, I was going to say also local scholarships. Um, I know a lot of people apply for the bigger ones like the Moorhead Kane and stuff. Um, so they often get like way more applications, but a lot of, a lot of the local ones, um, they're sometimes a little bit easier to get um, just because there's not as many people applying for them, but they are smaller amounts. But as you apply for more and more, like it, it adds up. Yeah, that's that's totally great advice. Um, so let's shift the focus and let's talk about fun things you guys do during the summer, like internships or research experiences. Um, maybe you guys could touch upon, did you, does your school offer any help to find internships or special research experiences, or did you have to go look for them? Um, stuff like that. Um, let's see who wants to speak. Nikki, do you want to talk about your internship? Yeah, I can start. Um, so I did something different every year during every summer during my undergrad, which was awesome to get a different experience and lots of different things that I could do potentially after undergrad um, or just some fun things. So um, I mentioned that I started doing undergraduate research the first summer, um, my summer after my first year in college. And so to get involved with that, I just emailed a bunch of professors. I looked at their websites and saw what um, research they were doing. And I could just find their emails online and shoot them a quick email explaining like what I wanted to do in their lab and asking if they had positions available. So definitely don't be afraid to do that. Um, a lot of them didn't get back to me and that's totally fine because they're really busy people. But if you email enough professors, someone will get back to you. And there's a lot of opportunities um, for undergraduate research. So I would suggest doing that if you're interested. Um, and then NC State also has a super wonderful career fair. Um, for you to find internships or full-time opportunities um, or co-ops, which are like um, one year or six month opportunities. Um, so I attended a bunch of the career fairs um, to look for internships. 
I actually got my internship um, after my second year through a smaller, more uh, specific career fair. It was uh, like the biomanufacturing uh, technology career fair. Um, so with that one, it was a little bit less stressful. I didn't have to navigate through like hundreds of different companies. There were just a handful and I was really interested in all of them. So uh, yeah, NC State has a lot of good opportunities uh, for finding internships and other opportunities. Um, as well as like the career development center. They'll help you write resumes, help you edit um, essays for like grad school applications or um, probably even scholarship applications too. So there's a lot of resources there. Thank you, Nikki. Oh, wait, one more question, Nikki. When you did your internship, what was your favorite part of it? I really love the people that I worked with. Um, that's a pretty general answer, but um, I, I did my research, or I did my internship, and through that, I realized that I didn't want to go right into industry, into like the pharmaceutical manufacturing um, type setting, which a lot of people do after a chemical engineering degree. Um, so I wasn't like super excited about the actual work that I was doing, but it made it totally worth it because the people there were awesome. Um, they were really fun to hang out with. We did like stuff outside of work. Um, I don't think I was 21 then, but like people went to breweries um, to hang out. So, uh, but I mean, another thing that I enjoyed a lot, um, not related to people was going on to like the clean room area. So um, this company made vaccines. So you have to like scrub your hands down, put on like scrubs, wear a hairnet. And so it was really cool to go onto like the manufacturing floor and talk to the people who are actually there like working on developing a vaccine. Great. Thank you, Nikki. That sounds like fun. It's always good getting hands-on experience in an actual company. Cause I know, I know when I was in high school, I had no idea what biomanufacturing was. Um, and I know Kennedy's program and Dayavon's program at NC Central um, is another biomanufacturing focus um, major slash um, institute. So I think there's lots of good opportunities in the area if you're interested in learning more about biomanufacturing. Um, so back to summers. Um, Hunter, did you do anything fun during your summers? Or since you were getting out in three years, I don't know if you had to take classes. Um, Summer classes. Um, I, I liked online classes. I didn't mind. So any extras that I needed to squeeze in, uh, I took summer courses, um, worked, and then I did a couple of different internships, um, similar to what Nikki was saying, just ask people, email them, like ask for the opportunity. Uh, no one's going to hand it to you. They're not going to pop up. You just hunt for them. And until you find something, I interned um, at a hospital's lab one summer um, when I was still interested in working in like a physical lab. Um, I interned at a pharmacy um, when I was considering pharmaceutical, um, going as a pharmacist. And then um, I ultimately ended up interning for PPD and their proposals um, group. And that's where I just kind of fell in love with the business operations side of things. Um, got so much exposure, but exposure to the operational side, but also seeing the different business processes of working hands-on in a CRM um, and different things like that. So it's definitely worth getting an internship and it helps you. So you know someone when you graduate and you can reach out to those connections um, and you, you kind of have an idea of how life after college works. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I think a lot with internships is you have to go after them yourself. Uh, Lily, do you want to talk yeah. about what you did during the summers? Sure. So um, I think I mentioned the internship and the math research at Texas A&M during my summers. Both of those, um, the cost of travel and housing were covered and I was also paid. Um, so um, that worked out well and the study abroad in Paris and Oxford one summer. And I remember I also um, worked at the music library for part of the summer too. And, you know, I would really recommend uh, if you have the opportunity to do like a work study, the library is a great option because uh, you can you can get some studying done when, when things are a little slow. Um, and also, um, uh, uh, if you're worried about um, saving up for your summer activities that could help towards that as well. Um, yeah, and like it was already mentioned, the Career Center um, definitely helped me a lot with um, uh, doing a lot of mock interviews and getting my resumes polished for, for my internship. 
Yeah, I think your suggestion about working in the library for work study is a good one. I know that's a lot of people like to work there. Um, let's see, Samia, did you have anything you want to share about your summers? Yeah, um, so one summer, the summer after my junior year, I did this program called the MED program. Um, so it's like put on by the UNC School of Medicine and Dentistry. And it's kind of a way to expose you to what life as a medical and dental student is like. Um, so it was really intense. It was nine weeks. We took the same classes um, as like medical and dental school students take. Um, but it was really like a unique opportunity. It was fully paid for um, and it was like meant for underserved communities. And so a lot of those people that I went through the program with are now my classmates or they're in dental school. Um, and it was just like such a cool opportunity to like expose me to what dental school is actually like. Um, and that actually helped me decide that I want to do dentistry. Um, so it was more classes, um, which kind of sucked, but it was really unique um, in that it was on campus and it was with like-minded people. Yeah, that seems like a great opportunity. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Kennedy, do you want to talk about what you did during your summers? Sure. So um, the summer after my freshman year, I had an internship at Duke University and I was working on genetic research. And like Nikki said, I think the people really make your experience. And my the people that worked in my lab, they were really like ready to help me learn because as a freshman, I didn't I hadn't even taken cell biology or anything. So I didn't know much of the information that they were covering in the lab, but I was thankful that the people in my lab were willing to explain to me. And yeah, we had a lot of fun as well. Like in and outside of the lab. Yeah, I think that's something about undergrad research. Don't be afraid to like get involved with it early. You might not think you know much, um, but most grad students um, and people you work with in the lab are willing to teach you. Um, they were in the same position once as well, being an undergrad who probably didn't know much. Um, I know I did start at undergrad research my freshman year of college. Um, so it's better to get started early so then you can learn how to do everything. Um, and then as time goes on, you can be, um, you can contribute more. Um, Gayavon, do you want to, um, Gayavion, do you want to add anything about your summers? Uh, yeah. Um, first, uh, I know somebody else mentioned the career center. So definitely uh, reach out to them because that's their job. Um, like you said, mock interviews, things like that, they can help you um, uh, look for internships in your field and then so they might find something that you've not heard of or they might have other connections. Um, I know for my first internship I was in a genetics lab at NC State and I found that one through a, um, a Google search <laughs> and so um, it was interesting. Um, I feel like not all internships are going to be I feel like all of them are helpful because they let you know what field you want to go into so that one was helpful in that I knew I did not want to go into that field and so and that also it was paid for um, I stayed on campus at NC State and they gave us like a food allowance and they also gave us a stipend for that summer and then um, the summer after my junior year I did a, um, an internship at UNC Chapel Hill the um, cancer biology one and again they paid for us to stay there um, a food allowance and a stipend and um, I thought both of those were really beneficial um, it helps you, like I said, know what field you want to go into. Um, I was definitely more interested in the cancer biology part where I got to do um, cell culture and um, there were mice involved. So it was more of a um, translational thing for me. And then um, that program was a two-year program. So we also got to do um, research during the semesters when we got back. And then we were also supposed to go back to Chapel Hill this summer, but um, you know, due to the pandemic, we couldn't do that. Um, and then I know there are also um, internships like post-grad. So I think internships are, they're super important. So it's, so you can just get exposure. So even if it's something you think you wouldn't be interested in, um, it'd be good to just give it a try. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Okay, so we've had some very specific questions in the chat. So I'm just going to do some rapid fire, see if we can get answers to some of these since we are running out of time. And then we'll do one last question for everybody to wrap up. Um, did anybody know, does anybody know if at your specific school, if you can take community college courses while you're at 
like say NC State or UNC and then they would still count at NC State or like your specific college you're at now? I think this is true at NC State because I've heard of people taking like chemistry at Wake Tech over the summer. But yeah, I don't- You can at NC State. Yeah. I don't know if it's true at any other schools. Um, I think- schools you can. Um, I replied to this one specifically because this is what I did a lot of. Um, I took a lot of classes ahead and that first year I didn't get everything done um, to be classified as a junior. Um, some colleges require like a Spanish or um, a PE or something really specific. And as a freshman, I was waitlisted several times and it was gonna set me back another mm-hmm. semester. Um, so I took a lot of these at community colleges. Um, I There was like um, Pitt Community College um, in Greenville, that was the main one there, but there's also schools like Lenore Ryan uh, has a community college in that area that I think I took one at, um, several different ones, and counselors will work with you. It's just making sure um, that the class transfers to the exact class you need wherever you're at, and there's normally your school will have a resource or a tool that says where you can pick the community college, and then you pick your school, and it'll line them up to show what it transfers to. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great response. Um, next question. Was anybody homeschooled? I don't think so. No, sorry, we can't answer that. Um, I have a friend who was homeschooled. Um, she's transitioned fine. Okay, yeah, maybe, Catherine, if you have more specific questions, I can put you in contact with um, Deavion, and then she could put you in contact with her friend um, if you just want to email the women in bio email. Um, and then somebody asked questions about horses and uh, equestrian clubs. I'm pretty sure NC State has like a club for equestrians, like people interested in riding horses. I would assume it's similar at most schools. Um, I think that's something you would just have to look up. My friend uh, was in the equestrian team at ECU and they didn't have stables on campus. Um, they were really close by um, that they would go to, but very similar to kind of how Nikki was saying with the rock climbing. We got to go all over the place because we would go and just kind of watch her shows. Um, so I know she traveled a lot for that and really enjoyed that um, piece. And it was fun just as her friend to get to go and watch. Yep. I know Duke has uh, clubs and classes, but I don't think they keep horses on campus. Yeah. Uh, so I went to Cornell for undergrad and we were required to take two PE classes. Um, and I know you could take horseback riding as a PE class. Um, so some schools are different and they do make you take PE, but they're usually cool PE classes. Um, and then somebody asked something about student athletes. I don't know if anybody had any friends that was a student athlete. Um, oh. They were wondering if they had to live in dorms or did they sure. live in ECU, um, they put all the student athletes in a certain dorm for that are freshmen. Um, mm-hmm. It's on College Hill, which is closer to the football team, um, the pool, like everything is kind of closer there for the athletes, um, but they're still regular students. So my uh, friend who was on the equestrian team, she got to still live with them, but her roommate wasn't on, wasn't on a sports team as well. But for the most part, they all live on the Hill area. Great. That's good. I would have never known how to answer that. <laughs> Thank you. So let's, we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna let each panel, panelist give their last words of wisdom. Do you have any advice for the students? Um, maybe like, I really love my major or maybe I would have done things differently. Um, how maybe, how did your major influence where you are if you've already graduated in your current career path? Um, just some final words of wisdom um, that may be helpful. So I'm just going to start in my lineup. Kennedy, do you want to go first? Um, well, I see this question in the chat about community college courses may be less expensive. And I just want to say that's not always true because I said I actually signed up for a class this summer and it was cheaper to do it at my university versus the community college. So just that was surprising to me. So I just wanted to let you guys know that as well. Like just check the prices and then the quality of the class that you're taking. Did you have any words of advice, like one tip or anything you wanted to share about if you could share anything? Or if you were in high school, what would you want to know about college that we haven't already touched on? Um, I guess, as I was saying before, just prepare yourself. I don't want to scare you, but don't prepare, like prepare yourself for the social curve that you're going to experience because that was real for me. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, Deavion, do you want to share any last words of wisdom? I know you you said something you you either changed majors or you weren't very happy with your major or right now. I don't know. Somebody touched on that in the I would definitely be flexible. Yeah. Um, I would say um coming in, like I said, I'm on full scholarship and it's for that major. So that's the main reason I didn't change my major. Um yeah, uh, be flexible. Um, I know it's important to have a plan and to have goals, of course, but don't be so rigid in it that you're like, oh, my major is pharmaceutical sciences, so I'm going to have to go into industry when I graduate. Because um, I didn't decide until like two summers ago that I wanted to go to med school. So definitely be flexible. Um, college can be overwhelming, but um, like I said, just take it day by day. So, yeah. yeah, thank you. I think that's great advice. Lily, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I would just say, don't be afraid of failures. You're going to make mistakes in your academics, in your social life, in your extracurricular, whatever it is. But as long as you learn something from it, consider that a success. And, um, you know, one time someone, I forget if it's a high school student or teacher, told me that if you always get A's and B's, and if you pass every exam and pass every interview, then maybe you're not challenging yourself enough. So, you know, if you if you get a, a result that is um, not what you hoped for, maybe that's just a sign that you you were challenged yourself and, and reaching higher. Um, and that's always a good thing. So don't, don't be afraid and don't be too discouraged. Thank you. Hunter, do you want to give some last words of advice? Um, I hope help. I started making a list. Um, so know your values. Just when you're when you're going to college, don't feel like pressured socially to kind of conform um, with the, the people you're around. Um, and then also be true to you. Um, so if you're you know looking at majors and whatever you're interested in, and if people try to guilt you, oh that's not um, that's not impressive enough. Like follow your heart because whatever you major in, wherever you go to college, that's going to be a part of you for the rest of your life. And it's, it's your life. So you want to do something that's going to make you happy and lead you to a career um, that is what you need in life. So don't worry too much about what um, other people are saying. Um, it's okay to change your mind. You're not going to know your first year. You can change your mind. I, I knew to get out early, I needed to kind of make up my mind. So that's why I had about three majors that first year and um, explore them, talk to the professor. Um, even if they're not your professor, you can reach out to someone who heads up the marketing department, who heads up the biology group, um, who is a teacher and the medical school, and they will, they're happy to talk to you, answer any questions, um, just to make sure you, you're confident with what you're going into. Um, and then my biggest piece of advice just for classes, I feel like no one ever told me this, but introduce yourself on that first day to your professor and just get a face to the name and make those connections and make those relationships. Um, maybe not your first year, you might be a little uncomfortable, but especially in your program, um, I'm still in contact with mine. I still go to our alumni reunions. And uh, the summer when I was hiring for an intern, I knew my major taught the skill set I needed. And so I was able to email my professor still and say, hey, do you have a current student that you think would fit this? And I hired an intern who was in my undergrad major because um, I knew she'd have that skill set. So if they know you and they know your interest, um, they can help you in the future. So that's just the business side of me, make connections and um, yeah, good luck. Thank you, Hunter. I think that was great advice. Um, Nikki, do you want to go next? Yeah. Um, so about chemical engineering and engineering in general, um, when I was in high school, I didn't take any like engineering specific classes, so I didn't really know what engineering was. And I think that's common, uh, like not to have exposure to engineering um, in different fields of engineering when you're in high school. So I would say if that's something that you're interested in, try to talk to other people who are in engineering. Um, it might be hard to find connections, but maybe you have um, like one of your parents or one of your aunts or uncles works with someone who has a sibling in engineering. I mean, there's like so many different connections. Um, so try to like reach out and find those people to discuss like what engineering really is because it wasn't exactly what I expected. Um, but there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of different things that you can do with engineering. So yeah, you can go into industry, you can do like more hands-on things, you can go into research, you can really get into the science. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. So I would say that 
if you're nervous about engineering, just try to talk to people about it and get an idea of what you might be getting yourself into. Um, but then just general advice is don't be afraid to ask for help from other people. Um, like other panelists have mentioned, like the professors are there to help you. Like they don't want to fail anyone. Um, they don't want to uh, like block people's opportunities. So if you talk to professors during office hours or other times, like they're always gonna be willing to help. And then same with your other friends in your classes, like they want you to succeed as well. So ask for help and don't be afraid to take time off from academics and just relax and do some fun stuff too, because that's what college is about as well. Yeah, I think that's great advice, especially about engineering. It sounds really, really scary. And I had no idea what engineering was really until I went to college. So I think it's yeah. best just to ask. Um, I know we're all here if you guys have questions. Um, Samia, do you want to um, talk or give some final last words of advice? Yeah, um, so I think what everyone has said has been absolutely great. I would just add that go somewhere that like you can see yourself being happy. Um, like I recently had to make the decision on where to go to dental school like about a year ago and I like put off that decision for three months, but then I ended up deciding based on where I could like truly see myself being happy. So I think in the end, like your academics and your career career will work out the way that they're meant to, but like where you see yourself like truly being happy and like flourishing is what really matters. And also like take advantage of every opportunity you get in college. Like one, your tuition's kind of paying for it. And two, like you'll never kind of have those options again. Um, so really take advantage of every opportunity. Um, go to those weekend things, like meet new people, like get involved in something you never thought you would be in. Um, so just really have fun and, you know, think about that. Because when I think about college, I think about those fun moments, not like the classes I took. So um, have fun along the way as well. Yeah, I think that's great advice because in a couple of years, once you graduate from college, you're not going to remember like staying up late, working on a problem set. You're going to remember the fun time. So you should find somewhere where you think um, you're going to feel comfortable, you're going to have fun. Um, so I think that's best because all of these schools have really, really great academics, um, but it comes down to where you're going to be most happy. And one thing I think people might not realize is sometimes it's good to be close to home. It's great. Um, it's also good to go away. There's so many different options. Also, weather does play into um, your mood. Um, so I grew up in North Carolina and I went to undergrad at Cornell, which is in upstate New York where it snows all the time. So if you are from North Carolina and moving to a different climate where it snows or maybe it's a lot more warm, it can affect your mood. And um, so that's just something people don't think about, which I'll give my one piece of advice. <laughs> um, so with that, I want to thank everybody for um, coming to today's event. I want to thank our panelists. Thank you for sharing such great wisdom, such great answers to the questions. Um, we are going to more than likely um, email out um, each of the panelists' email addresses um, to the participants um, from today's event. So you guys should have copies of email addresses. I'm just going to double check that they are OK with us sending out their emails. Um, and we will be having future Young Women in Bio events. I know somebody um, asked about how to get more information about Young Women in Bio events. Um, I think by signing up for this event, your email gets added to our list. So you should be getting emails in the future from our program. Um, so I think this is probably gonna be our last event for 2020. Um, give us a break for November and December. Um, it's been a long year and we wanna make sure everybody has time to enjoy the holidays. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody. I hope you guys have a great rest of the weekend. Go outside, enjoy the nice weather. At least it's nice here in North Carolina. Um, <laughs> so thank you everybody again, um, and especially to our panelists.